What's up everybody? We are up in Jupiter, Florida. We found an interesting boat here that we thought you'd like to see. It's a custom 65 foot steel monohull. Let's go take a look. This is our boat now. Oh my God. <laughs> So, I already noticed they've got solid stainless lifelines. I don't even know, are they called lifelines still if they're not lined? Yeah, lifelines, <laughs> handrails. Handrails. Solid stainless. Protected with a net. Welded. This is a steel hull bolt. Oh yeah. So they're just, they're just welded. Well, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. This is a Samson post right here instead of a cleat. <laughs> Such a big ship, that's probably a good idea. So we got a handrail on the cabin top here, too. Handholds so, everywhere, it looks Yeah, like. granny bars, very safe boat. Mast has the whisker pole. I see a winch here, and I think there might be multiple on the other side. Giant mainsail, slab reef main. It's got lazy bag, lazy jacks. Look at the size of the standing rigging. It's real big. It's should be for the size boat, yes. how heavy it is. Yeah. Got Gerard's for our airflow. Big port lights. They're newfound metal, stainless steel. Giant newfound metals port lights. Now, I don't know how this works on a steel hole, but I see like the top of what I would normally think is chain plates, but I don't know if that's just welded in. Do you know? It's just welded in. It's just welded yeah. in. Another Samson pose. Is that just welded too? Should be. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. The jet ski. There's a jet deck. ski on the foredeck, guys. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Cutter rigged. So we have your staysail and your headsail. Both are furling. Might need some new line. But other than that, it's in pretty good shape. I think they said that the staysail and for headsail were original, but the main was replaced a couple years ago. Uh, we've got two massive anchors here, as well as a massive Samson post and a windlass. And I believe he said there's 300 feet of chain for the anchor, so it's a lot of chain. Let's go aft. I really like these nets. These nets. They've been on. I think they said they've been on here for like 12 years, and they've lasted yes. that long. Yes. They have two kids, two dogs, and a cat that traveled with them, so these were important for them. This hatch goes down into, I guess the V-berth it would still be called, but I, there are like pilot berths down in there, and there's a nice ladder for that as well. Handrails. Handrails. Here and here as well, so as you keep continuing back, it's nice. It's covered, but you have your life raft. And there's also the one of the butterfly style hatches uh, up there that's covered as well. You got running backstays again. Yeah. And then you got a nice hard bimini. Nice hard bimini. Dodger yes. up front. <laughs> Look how big this winch is. That's a big winch. This is a nice little wood settee back here. It's got a cover on it. Here you have the dinghy. <laughs> the dinghy is a, it's a big dinghy. It's a big dinghy. It's on a six foot lift. So they said they've been in some really rough seas above six feet and no water in the dinghy at all, so. Yeah. And this, this dinghy is a Triumph. If you're not familiar with Triumph, they, they make pretty much indestructible, unsinkable boats. So it's a really nice little dinghy. And I believe this is for a grill that slides on here somehow. And then you've got fillet tables, two of them. And then you have a garage. So if you're curious about storage on a boat of this size and of this caliber, I'll take you down below and show you. Just for scale, you can see me probably look pretty small in comparison. And I'm only halfway through, so let's move this way. So probably pretty small in comparison here. 
pretty big, big storage area. All right. So now we're in the cockpit, which can be fully enclosed. So they have eyes and glass. And actually on the outside of the eyes and glass, they also have solid umbrella covering as well. So you can enclose this completely. And they have cockpit tables, drink holders, nav equipment, captain's chair, view of the sails, more electronics. This is everything. This everything. is a great place to spend a passage. So once you roll up that umbrella, this would be your view from the captain's chair. That's a really good view. It's a really good view. You can look up and see your sails. All right, let's go down below. All right. Let's do it. Ah, AC. <laughs> yeah, there's air Feel conditioner. <laughs> there's air conditioning on this boat. Very unlike nice. a lot of the boats we've toured. Right. We are in kind of like what reminds me of a pilot house. I guess it is a pilot house, right? It's a pilot house. Yeah, so we're in the pilot house. You've got your captain seat in here. There are two engines on this boat. So you have information about each. It looks like they have uh, about 5,892 hours and 6,493 hours. So they're a little different. Uh, you've got controls for lights, depth sounder, anchor, all of those good things, as well as I'm guessing this is the autopilot. Right, look at that view right there. Beautiful view. And you have your two throttles for both <laughs> motors. This is probably a good table for your nav charts and you can spin around to look at those. Above us is the butterfly hatch we were talking about earlier. And this panel on the floor goes to the engine compartment that we'll show you a little later, but keep it in mind. This whole panel comes off for if you need to lower anything into the engine compartment from above, this whole hatch can also come off. So the owner has had to do that before, so he mentioned it to us. You've got this beautiful set T over here, so you won't be lonely up here if you're piloting from here. And you can actually turn this into a quite a big berth. This cushion, you can see, fits in here. So it's a nice size berth for two. So then we can keep going forward. So now we're going down to the main salon. Yes. So, I mean, can you even call this a nook galley? I guess, sort of. It's a massive nook galley. So you've got a kind of traditional range almost. It looks yeah. like it belongs at a home. It's actually not gimbaled. That's probably one of my only critiques about, about yeah. this boat right now. But really cool. I mean, great to use at anchor. It's an electric yeah. stove. So. And it does have a fiddle if you're rocking a little bit. Uh, you have some extra prep area on both sides of this. Lots of storage and cubbies here. You have a nice size sink. Here is a cold plate refrigerator here. You've got an ice maker over here. And you actually have even more refrigeration over by the table and settees. So there, here, and here. So these two are refrigerators, and then that this one's a freezer. Lots of storage underneath. This is a nice settee area. The owner had talked about something he wanted to do but hasn't done is if you could make this where it lowers you'd have another nice double berth. Yeah, there's even storage up there. Tons of storage everywhere. So let's take a look in the cockpit sole here. This is what they call the basement. So that's a washer for your clothes. So this is below the main salon. We're below the cabin sole right now. Get all this storage. And I believe you're looking at tanks right here. So that's a tank, and behind me is a tank. And that's 700 gallons of water that you can hold. So now that we're out of the basement, let's uh, let's go, let's go forward. Woo! That fan went right. Away. The air conditioner just turned on. Oh. <laughs> Blowing out right there. All right. So forward of the galley and salon, we have our first head to show you. So traditional head, but separate shower or stand-up shower. Very nice. This is going to be your guest 
head or your kid's head or they get their own separate shower. On the port side here we have our first berth to show you. It's very nice. This is bigger than most, you know, master berths and yes. most boats. Lots of storage, shelving. Very nice. Here we have more storage. Show you. Hanging locker. We have a couple bunks right here. And now, we're in the V berth now. Yes, and up on deck earlier I told you that there was a hatch with a ladder that came down here. So this is where you can go up through that hatch there. It's a really cool V berth. Now, what's in there? This is going up to your anchor locker, so if you'd like to go show them that. So, and there's the anchor locker. So there's the interior of the hull as well right there, and there's all that chain. So we're continuing aft, back through the pilot house. There's your big TV. And so you got your Sensi right here, and then down there. Down the stairs, you are on your way to the aft master cabin. Let's do the master first, so let's go yes. right. Yes. We're saving the best for last. <laughs> so there is a large berth back there. This is definitely like queen to king size. Yeah, this is an island berth here, so you've got, you can access the, you know, the bed from yes. both ends there. Got two hatches above your the berth. It's beautiful. Two hatches above the berth, tons of storage on each side. It looks like basically matching storage, so you can be fair, his and hers. Got hanging lockers on each side, drawers on each side. And then forward, you have your own master ensuite. You have your head, sink, and shower, and tub. A little square tub there. That's pretty cool. And you've got me in the mirror. Very nice master suite. I think I could live on this. Yeah. I think this, this boat's bigger than our apartment for sure. Oh, yes, <laughs> definitely. All right, so this was really what excited Jordan. So you might be wondering. Where are those two engines? Where's all the equipment? Well, you have your, your panel right there, your electrical panel. And then Randy, going down here. You've got twin motors. So they're twin Ford Lehman diesels. They are 90 horsepower each. How many monohulls do you see with twin engines? I imagine that's very rare. How many monohulls do you see with an engine room this big? I mean, look at, <laughs> look at Randy. And look at look at the engine room. I mean, multiple people can fit down in here. Ooh, that's like open, Watch like yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got a 12 kilowatt. 12 and a half. 12 and a half kilowatt generator right there. You also have a modular water maker system. So part is here, part is over there. There's a water maker in addition to your 700 gallons. You have the refrigeration system for the cold plate refrigerator down here. And you have your battery bank down here as well. So I think you said there's 12 kilowatt hours of batteries over here. So look at that. And this white over here, that is a hot water tank, 20 gallons. So this boat, this boat has everything. Everything and room to store it all, which is amazing. Room to work on everything too, yes. not just store it. That's true. You can actually get down here and work on what you need to work on. Really awesome. This is very unique, this is very utilitarian. Yes. All right guys, so starting from the V-Birth, I'm gonna do a full continuous interior tour real quick just to give you guys an idea of what the boat looks like in one more cohesive look. We're at the V-Berth here. We're looking at the anchor locker. Turning around we have the double bunks. 
we've got the TV, we've got storage. Going back, we've got more storage. We've got double berth in here. The stateroom, more storage. We've got the forward head with its own separate shower. Going back, we've got the galley, the big galley. Port. We've got a big table and settee. All that refrigeration coming up. Pilot house. Another settee. Randy on it. <laughs> to starboard, we've got the second helm, the interior helm. Companionway. Starboard of the companion way. We've got the engine compartment, equipment room slash engine compartment. The most amazing part of this boat. And to aft, we've got this giant aft master stateroom with the island berth, lots of storage everywhere and this head with a separate tub shower. So what'd you think, Randy? That's a very interesting boat. It's massive. There's so much going on, but in a kind of good way. <laughs> yeah. It's the first steel boat we've looked at. Yes. Which is pretty cool. It's the first dual engine monohull that we've seen. That was interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty rare. If you've been following Jordan and I, you know that one of our favorite words is redundancy. So a monohull that has redundancy with its motors is amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So and it, two 90 horsepower diesels. They had a lot of hours on them, but yeah, that is one thing. But it, they're diesel. Yeah. Should last a while. But as far as like overall impressions of the boat for me, I loved it. I mean, I, I loved that <laughs> boat. It was, it was, it was really cool. And it is a big boat, mm -hmm. but it's a boat that's ready to go. It's ready to go. Yes. They just got back yeah. from a seven week trip in the Bahamas. And realistically, the asking price is pretty fair. I mean, in my opinion, and, and it's a good deal when you compare it to maybe like, I would say it's comparable to a 50 foot catamaran in accommodations. And it's much less than that. Than yeah, I mean, you've got the bunks, the forward berth, the berth in the pilot house and the aft berth. Yeah. And if you did a modification like the owner was saying to the table in the galley area, then that's all, another berth for two more people. Yeah, that's yeah. like 10 people. It's a it's a really cool boat. And yeah. the thing is too, it's a boat that's really set up to go anywhere, including high latitudes, mm -hmm. you know. For sailing high latitudes, people really like steel. They like aluminum. Mm -hmm. It's in theory a boat that you could take in this really cold weather and still be comfortable on it. I want to say it was originally built in Australia. He said that owner took it over to the Mediterranean. Another owner picked it up in Spain and then it came to the U.S. and he picked it up on the East Coast. Yeah, so it's already been all over the world, yeah. really. A well-traveled boat. <laughs> yeah, which is good. You want, yes. to, you want to hear that in boats. So I think it had a lot of the features that we really like. It had an exterior helm, which was, was pretty well protected. And then it had the pilot house down yeah. below which was really protected, obviously. Definitely. And it had everything you need, like the engines, the water maker, 700 gallons of tankage. There's a lot of positives with this boat. I mean, that engine and equipment room. I know, and it had that like a garage. You always say you want a garage on yeah. your boat. <laughs> it's just, it was the garage, the basement, the engine room. Yeah. There was a lot. Just because everything can't always be all positives, I am gonna nitpick, and I'm really nitpicking here. What I think the boat needs is some solar panels. Oh, for sure. Like uh, on top of the solid bimini. That's the perfect place to put yeah. it. It's not that there's not space for it. They just don't have it. We wanted to say a quick thanks to Rory and Lisa, the owners of the boat. They actually reached out to us because Rory had been watching some of our other boat tours and thought it'd be cool for us to walk through theirs as well. 
So thanks guys, we appreciate you letting us aboard and we're gonna put more information as well as their contact information in the description below because this boat is for sale. So like the asking price and some, a little bit of information on the boat is gonna be in the description as well as their contact information if you wanted even more information and were interested in potentially purchasing this boat. As always guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and a comment down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to follow along with our journey. And if you wanna know each and every time we upload a video, go ahead and hit that notification bell. See you guys. Bye. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for